Anzac commemorative round bringing plenty of great battles starting with this one. First up, it's the Vixen Slayers of Round 5, the Sunshine Coast Lightning, up against a New South Wales side who had their wings clipped on the West Coast. Both sides sitting on an equal eight points, so a win here will finally see one break away from the pack. Plenty of great matchups to get excited about too. Conan versus Clow, Housby versus Henschley. Who will stand tall? Well, we are about to find out. Well, Singleton was in the circle, but she was missed from Housby. Proud. Singleton. Hadley. Well, straight away, it's that same positioning, isn't it? On the edge of the court for Helen Housby. Little closer now. And a miss to start, but a huge rebound. That'll give them some confidence, Sharon. Excellent rebound. Shooters never like to uh, miss their first shot. It's sort of, uh, again, it's a confidence booster for the team if they can get that first shot in. So well done to the defenders for picking up that turnover. Sherry in. Oh, dangerous ball over the top. But Conan, in the form she's in from last week, pulls it in. So they've broken the centre pass here straight away. The Sunshine Coast Lightning, Sherian Wood. Hinchliff, Conan. Across the circle to Sherian. Who's she going to find again? Almost. Sarah Clow almost got a tip. Well, they're the ball, dicey then. balls, aren't they? They're very dicey, yeah. I think the placement just maybe needs to go a little bit uh, away from the defender. Uh, it's just not happening at the moment. Well, it's still getting them the points on the board, but certainly not a percentage play, is it? They won't want to be keeping that up the entire game. The Swift's down the other end. Singleton, first shot of the game, and it's a sweet one. Confident start from her. Wood, Sherian, way too easy second phase. Wood again, and there it is. There's that aerial ball that they love to put into Kane and Kath. They're not shying away from it off the circle edge no, at the moment, no, though. No, not at all. It's, and that's just confidence to be able to let the ball go because you know that she's going to be able to take that ball. Yeah, Kane stood up and did her job last week. Very few feeds ever, so if she gets the ball in oh. here, beautiful vision, Sarah Clark. Well, coaches always tell their players to look down court first, Kath, and that's one of the reasons why they tell us to do that. Well, Kate Walsh and Maddie Proud having a good old chuckle. Here it is, the assist from the goal defence on the Harvey Norman replay. Turner coming out early for a fly there, but Sarah Conan was left under the post by herself. But we'll see probably a lot more of that happening, Kath, as the match progresses. Let's get down again to Sam Pullman, who's noted something on the centre passes. Keep an eye out. The reason why Singleton was free as a bird at the post is the work that they're doing off the centre pass. So they actually screened Walsh so she couldn't actually get him defend. And at the, uh, at the other end, have a look at Lightning. Both uh, attack and goal attack are each sharing the load. So this is where the work in this game is going. Well, it was a good chase down there from Ali Smith, but just threw it straight out the other sideline. So the Lightning will keep possession. Such a great contest from Smith off that centre centre pass, wasn't it? That's exactly what you want your wing defence to do. Cover that first phase. Well, some good defence coming here, but the Sunshine Coast Lightning don't look at all panicked. Plenty of options. Sherian. Cassidy. Conan out of the circle, but as I said, very rarely does it go directly in. That's a good tip and manages to stay on side. Ali Smith. Cloud. Proud flying through the middle. Singleton. Hadley. Contact centre. And again, that spot right at the top, taking a lot of ball in front is Helen Housby. Gets them back to level. Centre pass to follow. And this crowd is invested, isn't it, Sharon? They've brought the volume early. They sure are, Kath. Great to see everyone out here today in, in uh, their supporter colours, the Swifts colours. Well, they love that one too. You can hear the cheer as the Swifts take the lead. Wood. Conan. Better placement. 
And again, well, Sarah Clowder doing exceptionally well to get her feet around. Vantage offside wing defence. And there's that one again, Kat, straight over the top. It's that quick release from Wood, isn't it? That the defenders just aren't ready for it. Well, she's, it looks like she's in the motion of shooting too. So exactly. they're ready to get their three feet on the shot and then yeah. she just dishes it off. Yeah. And Conan knows it's coming every time. So the defenders are going to have to realise that and pick up on that. Well, boom, again. there it is. They pick up on it pretty quickly because it's coming at a rate of knots at the moment. Sunshine Coast Lightning got themselves back in front and again the centre pass to follow. You can see the Harvey Norman replay in the bottom of the screen and just a yes. breaking call against Maddie Proud. Kara Cohn and another one, five from five to start the game. I think it's just the timing of the defenders up there getting up for that high ball too, Kat. They really need to get back and up under that high ball coming in. Was a swing to the top of the circle that just got there. Obstruction go keeper. Go keeper obstruction. Yes. And the contact penalty. So Housby will have a shot from a decent distance. Back to one. Well, lots happened in just over five minutes of this contest already. Oh, that is an extraordinary take. Why she couldn't pull it in, Kara Conan. Swift's coach, Bryony Akel. She'd be fairly happy with what she's seeing at the moment, I'd imagine, as we see the Harvey Norman replay. I think she'd be on the house, me. Sorry, Kath, I was going to say, I think she'd be pretty happy with that uh, delivery from Hadley into the shooting circle. Yeah, Singleton and Howes be really nice rotation. They can mix up what they're doing, as you can see here. Oh, contact, win. Plenty of movement. Just, Both options. Um, and too much space. Oh, Defenders are giving them way too much space. I think they really need to close up that space and get more body on body. Yeah. Sherian, Wood, off balance. Keeps it into Hinchliff. And that's a beautiful touch pass again over the top to Kara Conan. And they're going to exploit that all day, aren't they? Because Maddie Turner, not as tall as Sarah Clow. So when there's that one-on-one -on -one inside the circle, and, let it go. and that's the thing, when you've got that height difference, there's not a hell of a lot you can do other than just try to work out some strategies on how to, I guess, uh, double defend or, uh, yeah, they're just going to have to work out. Maybe a little bit of um, more hands over out front as well for a bit of protection for the defenders back, back in that circle. Hench lift to hench lift. Cassidy. That's a tongue twister for you. It is, yeah, I don't plan on saying that much more. <laughs> Well, she was so good, though, wasn't she, Maddie Hinchley? There last we go. Week. A few little touches on the ball here, disrupting the play for the Sunshine Coast Lightning. It eventually gets there, and it is goal for goal at the moment in the opening quarter of Game 1 ends at Commemorative Round. Kath, I just think the Lightning are getting off that centre pass way too easy. I'd really love to see a little bit more pressure, or a lot more pressure on that first ball coming off that centre pass. And he's so right, the danger with this lineup is that they take equal set of passes, they take equal feeds, so it's not like you can shut one down yeah, and sharing you the win load. the battle. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's a tough one to defend. There's your last 10, and it's coming in patches of three. And again, how's the on her own? Home alone, as Sue Gordian would say. Yeah, contact outside the circle, Sarah Klaus. So she's now stuck a long way from the circle. They want to get it in there ASAP. The Sunshine Coast Lightning. And they do it with good body positioning. Another one on the board. Kara Conan, 10 from 10 already. And Coach Bryony Akel wants to stop that run. It's an HCF timeout. Let's get down to the New South Wales Swifts huddle and see if we can have a listen as to why she wanted to stop here. She wants that side top off there. Just change it so she's got to go on the opposite hand. Right? Yeah. Okay. If we're so you're doing the side, she wants to she wants push it off and you're starting here. Yeah. Switch it and make it go this way. Yeah? Force her middle so it mixes up their second phase in. Um, when Kara drives that baseline and we're getting stuck directly behind her waiting, don't get flat. Come around and have a go at it. She wants that ball to go shoot it and shoot up. Yeah? Quick three feet. Don't let her have the shuffle shot. Don't wait. Come around. Go over the top. Yeah? You good? You don't guys. Keep that defensive pressure 
Sharon, you called it. The first chat went to the mid-court about trying to, or to Ellie Smith in particular, trying to stop that, that centre pass and the easy flow for the Sunshine Coast Lightning. What does Bridie Aker want? Yeah, so she's wanting her, so she noticed that the wing attack, or Sherry and coming off the off the pass, but her next de uh, second phase movement is down to the pocket. So she's just sat, telling her to be aware of that and to stop that drive down to the pocket. We'll get down to Sam Pullman too, who's on the sideline for us, who was in... The the Sunshine Coast Lightning huddle. Noticed a little something with Steph Woodson. Yeah, really interesting huddle. I think their attack line's doing really well, but Steph Wood's face said it all. She said, I, I am struggling and told the coach. And also the physio. So don't be surprised if we see a bit of a change in that goal attack position soon. Well, good work, Spy. We will keep an eye on Steph Wood closely. She's so Thank important to this lineup. Although Batchel Dor was impressive pre-season and she's been impressive in patches so far this season. Oh, nowhere to go for the New South Wales Swifts. Hadley all the way back. Two on! Oh, that's enough done from Hinchliffe. So obviously in that timeout, uh, Coach Kylie Byrne would have had a word to their defenders, obviously, and whatever she said, they've gone and done it and it's worked. Well, she was nowhere near getting the ball, but the fact that she came flying, yeah. it caused a drop. That's Absolutely. almost enough, isn't it? That it is almost enough. enough. Yeah, Contact that's right, Kath. It's really just putting that pressure on. Whether you get the intercept or not, you're putting the pressure on that pass, forcing yeah. the error. And there's another little dish off between Wood and Conan. 15 seconds away from the power five. And see if Helen Housby's going to turn it on as she did last week. Well, she missed an easy feed under the post to Singleton. Time in possession there. 56%, a lot more time in the hands of the Sunshine Coast Lightning. There is the siren. Kelly Singleton, the first one to have a crack for Kate Walsh. She's having a bar of it. Every defender loves to do that, Kath. Well, and Kate is one of the best She's in the business great. too, isn't awesome. she? Awesome. And I'm sure you've had a few defenders do that on you in your... There she goes there. Amazing. It's just all in the timing, really, isn't it? Well, from three feet. That's yeah. incredibly yeah. hard to do. Excellent vertical jump. Sherry into Conan. No need for a super shot here. Right under the post as she's found herself the majority of this first quarter. Sunshine Coast Lightning now out by three. Sherry and Wood. Oh. Enschliff pulls it in. Front position that time from Conan. Wood again. Contact in the back. Oh, yeah, a good effort from Smith. And she has got the height advantage over Sherian. Another good take and some beautiful touch coming from the midcourt over the top to Conan. Well, she's picking up where she left off, isn't she? Shooting exceptionally well. There's the Harvey Norman replay, Ali Smith. Yeah, unlucky. I mean, it really, she, she made a good effort, good attempt to get that ball over the top of Sherian. Well, and there's just been a turnover down the other end as well. So the Sunshine Coast Lightning flying Bounds down court. Contact wing defence. Swift's five general play turnovers in that first quarter. And still three yeah. minutes to go. Well, that will please Bryony Akel, though. Another tip from defence. And Sarah Clare was able to get that intercept because she got her feet back and up. And that's exactly what we were looking for. I remember hearing a coach say to me once, get your feet under your body. I thought that's a really silly thing to say, but it's so true, yeah. isn't it? To get up, you need to have the money. A lot of the time, yeah, you're right, we, we try to attack the ball and just take our, our hands rather than our feet. So it's great to see. Um, I think that's what's going to work for them down in that defence end. Conan again. Well, why aren't they onto this? She's very rarely taken a ball mm. in front. It's that beautiful little drop back every time. Sunshine Coast Lightning by four. That is a good second phase from the New South Wales Swifts. Singleton. She doesn't even look like missing, does she, Kath? No, very comfortable. Looking very comfortable. Three from three from Kelly Singleton. And the one attempt at a super shot. Sherian. Conan outside the circle, back to Sherian. Steph Wood. Suncorp super shot, and it was a massive attempt. Could have thought, actually thought the pass was on to Conan there under, underneath the post. She had good positioning. But we know that Steph Wood is uh, an expert at that super shot, so. Well, don't know about that call. It looks like a, yes. a bit of a carry, if anything. That, that is a stepping call, I guess, against Ali Smith. 
Last thing they wanted to do was give up an easy turnover and the Sunshine Coast Lightning ball in hand. There's Cara Kanan doing the damage from everywhere, favouring that right side of the court though, but none taken long distance. So the Swifts really do need to have a look at that and how they defend it. Housby had to do some chase work. Singleton, another rejection, Kate Walsh. Well, she's brought some form, that hasn't she, from those huh? super shot distances. And just like that, the Sunshine Coast lining out by five. And she's fired up, Kath. I just saw her slap her hands and she's yelling up the other end to her attackers. So she's keen to, to do some more of those, I think. Sunshine Coast Lightning have put their foot down. One minute to go in this quarter, sitting on 18 already. And it's all Kara Cohn and Steph Ward, just the one attempt. Two to one. Dolphins stand up. They needed that for New South Wales Swiss. The Suncourt super shot gets them back to four. There it is again, Kath. Well, it's nowhere near the edge of the circle. They need no. to do a positional swap or yeah. something because that ball should not be going that sort of distance over the back. Conan's good, but she's not a Janelle Fowler. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> Proud. Housby. Well, she's feeling it. She's going to shoot another one. So good, as we mentioned last week from distance. Ten seconds, they need to get a wriggle on here, the New South Wales Swifts. And that's how you do it. And again. <laughs> that is exactly how you do it, and that will be the end of the first quarter. So the Sunshine Coast Lightning take a four-goal buffer into the main break. Game one of the Anzac commemorative round. Swifts and the Lightning goal for goal early in that quarter, Sharon. And Lightning, though, just put their foot down in the second half, didn't they? Yeah, they sure did, Kath. And I was just listening to Kylie Byrne, their coach, talking to her charges, saying that someone always has to be middle channel and not get too wide. She spoke to her circle defenders about uh, denying that first option, stepping up, getting hands over, because at the moment they're passing and cutting on them. Um, so that's something that we're going to have to look out for in this second quarter. Well, something else to look out for, too, is goalkeeper. There's been a change for the New South Wales Swifts. Sarah Clow back in goalkeeper. Maddie Turner, as we thought, may come out to goal defence, but Clow not looking great in that quarter time break. So we'll keep an eye on her as well. And, well, there it is. And there's the difference in height in that one-on-one. -on -one. Well, if Sarah Clow's not feeling that great, and still producing the goods like that. Bryony Ake will be desperate to keep her out there. Yeah, well, you called it, Kath. Look, there's that, yeah, the height difference in there, and that's what I think we're going to see um, some more turnovers happening down that end with Sarah Clow in that goalkeeper position. Well, speaking of Sarah Clow, let's get down to Sam Pullman. Do you know anything about it? Look, uh, Brony is spending a lot of time with both the defence and the attacker, which is why the changes have been made. But interesting enough, the defence and she said ex concede the first phase. So let Lightning get that first phase and let's concentrate on what they're doing next. Spoke a lot to Sarah about the movement around Clow. I'm sorry, movement around Conan um, so that Clow can get more hand on the ball. And it's great to see she's done that so far. Well, really interesting. Let the first ball go. And then worry about after that. You don't often hear coaches say that. So we'll keep an eye on that one and see if that works in their favour. And another change down the other end, obviously, Sophie Fawns and a goal shooter. So it gets Helen Housby back into her position of goal attack. Bryony Aker likes the start from Fawns. And she swapped the two of them early. Singleton and Fawns Well, another turnover. Sarah Clow, right place, right time. Great call from Bryony Aker, I would say, Kath. Well, she's not a bad coach, Bonnie Yeah, she, seems she, to know she does all right. <laughs> <laughs> Helen Housby under the post. Where speaking she of, likes to be. Speaking of coaches, so great to see Nat Avellino, former Diamonds player, sitting on the bench there, obviously giving some guidance to the, the shooting shooting end. So, yeah, great to see our former players coming back and giving back to netball. Well, yeah, it is a great thing, fortunately for her. Sadly, for Beck Bully, though, um, she's now out with COVID, their normal assistant coach. A great opportunity, though, for Nat Avellino, you're right, one of the best brains in the business in terms of attack. And that was a beautiful little patient pass, waiting for Fawns to adjust. Just like that, the New South Wales Swifts have got them back in the contest. 
And that's a big swing ball that Clow potentially could have had a crack at. Absolutely. But you know, look, the ball is going to be continue to come in high into um, into Conan. So you know, we just got to Clow's just got to continue to get her feet back and up, and I think that's going to work for her. Sophie Fawns has brought the movement and the timing with it, which is the all important factor. Opened up that circle for the Swifts beautifully. I think it's about the defenders in the lightning end not getting sucked in by Fawns driving out and then dropping back to the post. So we're going to have to be aware of that. And that's when we talk about, you know, sometimes conceding that first ball and just worrying about what's going to happen next. It's better to let them have a long shot than a short one. Absolutely. Yeah. Smith, Hadley. Proud. Hadley again. Well, didn't want to go to Fawns. Wants to go direct to the post. Oh. Well, just oh, a gosh. rare crumble from Houseby there. Well, a couple of them. A comedy of errors. Swifts end up back with it, drying the sweat off the hands is Helen Houseby. Here's a Harvey Norman replay. Good touch on the ball, but just slips out of the hands. Pickups, New South Wales. Swifts doing well. Really onto those loose balls. Beautiful ball for Proud. Eyes on her. Well, it's looking a lot sharper down this end now, isn't it? A lot more direct. Oh, I'm not sure you can do that, but anyway. I'm... <laughs> oh, I love it. Kate Walsh is just trying to see how far she can push the boundaries. Turns out quite a far way. Have a look here as she just tries to decapitate oh. Sophie Fawns. She's one of the best characters in the game, isn't she, Kate Walsh? She is. She loves her netball. She's always got a smile on her face, but look at that, 17 penalties. Well, if Sarah Clow isn't feeling well, no one would know. She's turned this game on its head. Housby, back to Turner. Proud. Fawns. Don't know if that was meant to go to Walsh, but she'll take it. Tara Hinchcliffe, I think we can credit her with that one. She had great hands over. She's got such a long reach. I think it just, uh, the shooters didn't have the visibility to put that ball in accurately. Well, oh, just too easy there. I feel like Maddie Turner just been a step or two behind a lot of this first half. Yeah, absolutely. You, you know, you can't allow your goal attack to just run in uncontested. So I think she really needs to just start what we used to call back in my day, working the ground and doing that hard yakka out front and just holding up her uh, entry into the circle. Well, the first miss of the game for Kara Kona, but she gets the rebound. So she's 23 from 24 now. Really confirming the fact that last week wasn't a fluke. She's found form in season 2022. And good timing with Aussie Diamond selection not far away. That'll happen at the end of round 12. There they are. You can see Sarah Clow in the shot there, really sucking it in, taking some big breaths. As I said, we'll keep an eye on her, how she's feeling. Sherry. Well, a miscommunication, but Wood casually cleans up the mess, keeps it in play. And she looks like she's run out of puff as well. She's playing on pure smarts here, Steph Wood. But keep on the side. And fortunately for the Lightning, she can. She has got that real playmaker brain about her, Steph Wood. Yeah, she does. She, she makes it look so easy, doesn't she, Kath? Well, it is another HCF tactical timeout this time for the Sunshine Coast Lightning. They're still in control of this opening half, though. In front by three at the moment. And we'll see if we can have a listen in to them in this break. Kylie Burns still coming, just having a chat with her specialist coach and her assistant coach, Vicky Wilson. And sometimes that's a great opportunity for the players to just get in and have a chat too. Yeah. So, even that, so if Helen's only looking, she turns to Maddie Proud. Yes. Um, even if you have to come off, like if she's on the hold to an open side and the other person can come off. So 
I just always know where Maddie is. So as soon as someone gets the ball caught, Maddie. Um, hey, when the ball is three quarter tag, uh, sorry, now through 14, try and stay ahead of, ahead of Hay. Okay, yeah, so at the on. moment you're running behind yeah. and she's able to put the foot down and go, I want you to stay ahead of her so you've got to push it back up the court. Yeah. The other thing is, I think there's opportunities here for hands to sag, particularly over Where's Wally? That was easy. <laughs> oh, Maddie Proud manages to keep it in. Great control, one-handed. Housby. Hadley. Fawns, arm up twice in the circle. No one's seen her. Proud. Hadley, Housby. Again, Fawns, three oh. times they have oh, missed yes. her. She continues to re-offer and then... <laughs> Ends up with Housby. Well, she had the hands up, didn't she? But maybe she needs to use her voice a little bit more so that can actually hear her as well. Well, they're still learning how to play with her, aren't they? Wasn't in the contract to 10 at the start of the season, as we know. She is officially now Maddie Turner, the little tip. Straight up. Sam Pullman, we'll get down to you now. Have you Daddy's heard anything more on Sarah Plow? I was watching the huddle nice and closely. They spent a lot of time with Sarah. Looking, look, I'm not one bit surprised, but on court right now, she's leading the Nissan net points, yet not feeling overly well. We know that she's a diabetic, so um, they've got the right people in place in terms of the physio and talking to the doctor to make sure that her levels are okay and she's feeling okay to continue out this game. Yeah, well, first and foremost, the health of the athletes is what it's all about. But having a cracker game for someone who's not 100%. Big swing to Turner. Proud. Hadley. Housby. Again, they don't look to fawns. I don't think they've got that natural yes. let's turn and let's look to it and get the ball directly there as they would a Sam Wallace. Yeah, you're right. It's kind of like that natural instinct to just turn and sight the most experienced player on the court. And, you know, look, there's nothing wrong with that. But, you know, Sophie has, as you said, been in three times been in position to get that ball. Just was then as well. And another block in the meantime, a tip on the ball coming from Kate Walsh as is in fire, on fire from that department. That is a good lead up. And it finishes with the lady who's been doing all the work down the back, but going unnoticed, Sophie Fawns. Direct Sherry into Conan. Henschliff. Wood. Wood again. The step back and the nail. Well, Clow's working absolutely overtime down there. Kath just watching her on cone and she just was riding, uh, covering her every movement. Oh, Helen Housby, what a take. Is your front arm? Well, it looked like the, the start of, of a wings. triple jump almost. <laughs> With the wings. We have very talented netballers. <laughs> <We> do. <laughs> That's why they're getting poached left, right and centre for sports like AFLW. Helen Housby drains one from distance too. So she's warming up for that Suncorp Super Netball time coming up. There it is, the take from Helen Housby on the Harvey Norman replay. Henschleaf, no Daddy one to pass to. Sherian fumbles. I don't know if the ball's got a little bit of moisture on it in this game, but we've seen a couple of uncharacteristic fumbles. Here she is, Helen Housby, 10 of the last week. And she's going to lose her a second. And the decibels in here just got a whole lot higher. The HCF timeout now the way of the Sunshine Coast Lightning as the New South Wales Swifts take the lead, winning this quarter 7 to 11.
in that quarter time huddle. Yeah, well, Bryony was uh, basically saying no cross court balls, use the fake, because those cross court balls can be so easily intercepted. They just want to get it down court, get it down quickly. Um, and also, just they were talking to uh, the outside on the circle there, just watching for the mix, mix match of the edge of the circle. So making sure that they're covering each other's players if they're crossing over one another. Well, it was a timeout too, not a quarter time break. So much happening here in this game. Well, Henschliff picks one up and they find themselves down by two. Kylie Byrne will love that defensive effort coming from the midcourt. Wood, Sherian, Conan, one of the best in the game and exploiting the smallest of gaps around the goalpost and that baseline. She's so elusive, isn't she? You think you've got it covered one moment and next minute she just pops out, out of nowhere. Such a great skill to have. Sherian. Wood all the way back in the goal circle. Wasn't even attempting to go for that centre pass. And then there is the mismatch again. Kara Conan still just the one miss, sitting at 96% shooting. Proud. Fawns. Will she shoot it? No. Helen Housby, great touch pass over the top. And another one on the board for her. Still just the one miss. Regular time and the one miss from Supershot Territory. Two from three. And there's your quarter time break. So the Lightning in control the first and the Swifts well and truly in control, winning this quarter by five. We've just seen Taylor Fraser come on to wing defence there. So um, that's a position that she's used to. So, you know, we'll see what she can do on Sherian. Yeah, it's really flexible midcourt for the New South Wales Swifts, isn't it? They can all pretty much play all three positions. Release the ball. And there it is again, Kath. That quick release. Defenders' heads were down. Swifts! Gets it back to even. Just under three minutes to play in this second Release. quarter. Henschliff, another tip. Well, what a season she's had to loving what she's putting out on court and continues to do proud how's be the strong drive in and it draws the defender opens up forms behind i love seeing these young players just step out on court and just Go for it, Kath. You know, she doesn't look phased by what's going on in the circle there. No, she looks happy, doesn't she? She looks happy. <laughs> She's enjoying her netball, and it's so great to see. I love it, too. I can't tell you. <laughs> Makes my heart sing. <laughs> Wood, Sherian. Back to Cassidy. Sherian again. The quick play, Wood, and there it is. Well, it went through four or five pairs of hands, but it was no longer than a second in each one. Just that, Fourth level. Just that last moment there, Kath, Sarah Clough allowed Conan to get in behind her and, you know, it was previously that she was side on and pushing center. her one way. It was just that final second, the ball, she that just got caught out in front. Back. She's actually going that over to Bryony now center. to have a chat to her. Maybe still not feeling well or Bryony maybe just giving her some, some tips from the sideline. Well, it's the smarts, too, of the attack line out the front, isn't it? Moving the ball around until that opens up. Absolutely, yeah. You've got to be patient in attack and, you know, reset. If there's nothing on, you go back and reset on the transverse line. Wood, Henschliff. Waits for something else. Wood, Sherian. Then it opens. Again, though, eyes down. Cloud doesn't have vision to the ball yeah, at all. Yeah, that's the thing. The eyes were down. Eyes were down. And if they were up, she would have seen that and have a crack at it. You know, she, you know, she isn't looking all that well, to be honest. I, I'm not sure how much longer she's going to be staying out on court. She's really doing her best, though. Well, she certainly is. Still 57 is net points. Game high. Good chase from Hadley. And then an easy connection from Fawns to Housby to keep them in the hunt. It's level. 40 seconds remaining. There she is, Sarah Cloud. Does not look good at all. Well, I'd be surprised if we see much of her in this second half, although the halftime break might be enough just to recharge the batteries a little. Thrown out of court, wasted the New South Wales Swiss. Maddie Proud not liking it, arguing with the umpire. There must have been a tip on the ball. 
Well, it's heating up here, isn't it? Ken Rosewell Arena. The importance of this battle is well and truly showing. Four seconds, the penalty, so time enough to shoot it for Conan. And there it is, the halftime siren and the Sunshine Coast Lightning sneak themselves back in front after being down the majority of that second quarter. What an up and down first half we've seen. It was the Sunshine Coast Lightning by four in the opening quarter and then the New South Wales Swifts by three in the second. Sarah Clow, Maddie Proud, game high, missing net points at the moment, sitting on 60. And the best for the Sunshine Coast Lightning is Maddie Hinchliff. There's Steph Wood looking a little bit chirpier, as is Sarah Clow. Kara Conan certainly is having a sing along with the music in the background. As they just wait for the ball to be brought out onto court to start this second half. They're all getting into it, Kath. They're all having a bit are. of a dance and a sing along. What's going on here? <laughs> Well, that's what Anzac commemorative round is all about, isn't it? The bigger picture. And enjoying themselves for a moment. Those smiles will soon disappear, though, as we start this third quarter. Conan, Sherian, Wood. Well, that time covered beautifully from Turner and Cloud. Nowhere to find Conan, and again, the tip and the chase coming between the pairing. Had her eyes up that time, Kath. Fawns, well, had to go back, but didn't help that she threw it out of court. Inchliff. Long ball again. How's the pinpoint accuracy of that one to find Clow on that baseline? Such an ambitious pass because it was kind of, was either going to get there or it wasn't, but it got through in the end. Well, let's get down now to the head coach of the New South Wales Swiss, Bryony Akel. And Bryony, have to ask you straight away, how's Sarah Clow going? She didn't look great in that opening half. Yeah, she wasn't feeling the best, but uh, apparently she's feeling a bit better now, thank goodness. Well, she's doing a fantastic job um, on Conan. She made such an impact when she, she went back into that goalkeeper position. What was your key message to Sarah uh, when she went on? Yeah, I, I just think it's to be smart. Well, obviously, we know that Cara is a fantastic player and she uses that baseline beautifully. So I'm just asking her to get between the, the thrower and, the, and her in goal shooter, just having a go coming around outside arm. And um, Sophie Fawns has come on, and she's such a lovely young player, um, player of the future. She looks like she's enjoying herself out there. What are, what are you making of her game so far? Yeah, I mean, she's going to get better every minute she spends out on this SSN court. And for me, she does a great job. She's just got to take things as they come, um, not to get too stressed, and obviously work out work with Helen out there. And she, as she just gets hammered out, out there. Before we let you go, Bryony, just quickly, Maddie Proud didn't make the Aussie squad after being there. How's she been this week? She's a trooper. I think she wishes the girl, you know, obviously she would like to be there, but um, she'll work out at, hard out there today and wish, you know, the Diamonds all the best. All right, we'll leave you to it. Thanks for your time, Bryony. Thanks, guys. Well, here's the Harvey Norman replay. There's a bit of fisticuffs going on inside the circle, not dissimilar to what happened with the arm from Walsh before, but this time escalated to the fact there's a player on the floor so plenty happening, and that is the best possible way to respond. The youngster standing up to it. I'm just wondering if Kate Walsh actually knows that there is a body there, or Does Kate Walsh you know, know does she? Do you think there? she knows, Kath? I'm, I'm guessing that's a rhetorical question. Of course it was. She does. It was. <laughs> <laughs> you know, us defenders, we're quite innocent. Yeah, until proven guilty, which <laughs> happened just then. The rebound to the Sunshine Coast Lightning. Well, Wood has been a little guilty of being lazy on the take, and she paid for it that time. Turner snuck in and stole it away from her. Hadley. Contact, contact. Pickups again, the New South Wales Swifts really dogged on those loose balls. Fawns, Hadley. Well, Fawns again was available, and they're still not giving you the ball with there confidence. Now it opens up and she does the job for them. 
Sophie Fawns, 10 from 11 since coming onto the court. There's the touch pass over the top. Hinchliff, Sherian, Wood, Cassidy, Conan outside the circle. And there's a penalty outside the circle too. Sarah Clow. So a two on one inside. Wood the front, Conan the base. Well, it can't be separated at the start of this third quarter. Three apiece. Henschliff, again, she's so good in defence, isn't she? Yeah, she's obviously just, doing the job in attack. Yeah, she's forcing that her player to the sideline and she's just covering that front position as well as the side position. And that's exactly what you want uh, defenders to do. Well, it was a miss, but a massive rebound came from both of them, really. Housby, the tip, forms the chase. Well, here it is again. There's got to be a call from the umpire shortly here about it. Oh, she's pushed her out of the way as well. Here it comes. No. Allowed to continue. Well, Sophie Fawns has got to be careful not to retaliate Absolutely. too much. You can hear the crowd actually having a go at Walsh. When in actual fact, Walsh was standing her ground with her hand up. So if, if Fawns does come underneath, it's contact on her. Sam Pullman will be all over the argy bargy in the circle. Are you loving this, Sam? Who's at fault when I'm, it comes to that shot? I'm stuff? loving this and I'm very close to the action. What I love most is the fact that Helen Housby obviously sticking up for her teammate in that shoot, shooting circle and Walsh giving her words as they run back to the centre pass. Now, for me, I think it's Walsh trying to get into a younger head, head uh, younger player's head and really dominating. Do I think it's OK? Probably taking it a bit too far now. Well, it's not working for her at the moment. Sophie Fawn's just getting on with the job too, so she's showing maturity beyond her years. Karakonen off and... Riley on. Yes. <laughs> Drains one. There she is, Riley Batchel-Dor. So Cara Conan gone to have a little rest on the bench after what was an impressive opener. 33 from 34 for her. Wood, the drive, with no one on her. And drains it. Steph Wood, only her third shot of the game. So she's been quiet. She may need to lift now with the youngster on court proud. Four. Well, the crowd are really getting into this game now, aren't they, Kath? Well, it's going to be a nail-biter if it continues like this. Maddie Turner's having an absolute blinder today. I think that uh, diamond selection has really fired her up today. Well, she's been a little hot and cold, though, because earlier we were talking about her being a few paces off Absolutely, the ball. Absolutely, yeah. Well, so it's really, she's only just come into the game, but I'm just loving what she's doing right now. She's got her hands over everything, getting, you know, those tips. Yeah, again, Walsh trying to be a little cheeky there. She had one hand in the stomach of Sophie Thorne. So she's pulling every single cheeky trick out of the bag. If we can see the Harvey Norman replay here, watch the other hand in the stomach of Fawns on the take. Oh, Hasby just shoves her out of the way. Well, we could do a highlights package purely on what's happening in that goal circle. There's your last 10, and it's the New South Wales Swifts that have put the foot down, found a little bit of momentum with the last three. And with that, they take a three-goal buffer. Fawns. Housby. The swing to Proud. Housby. Back to Proud. Patient with the ball, the New South Wales Swifts. Bryony Aigle, plenty to say. HCF timeout called by the Sunshine Coast Lightning. So they have certainly sensed a momentum shift here. The New South Wales Swifts up by three and they're winning this quarter 10 to six.
So Kylie Byrne wants to get hold of them at the moment. Kate Walsh doing all the talking. Let's see if we can pick up what they're on about. She's just come to life, hasn't she, in this third quarter? Absolutely has. That's a lesson for Batchel Door that isn't no. Take the ball strongly. Don't assume it's in your hands. Proud. Housby. Again, no vision to the circle. I feel like I need to go and put a red flashing light on the top of Sophie Fawns' head. She's been available time and time again and has been missed. There's Maddie Proud, been having a cracker of a game. Really goes unnoticed though, doesn't she, Maddie Proud? Because she's not overly flashy, but she just does what she's got to do. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, and look, it's the important people that notice those things, Kath. So, you know, the coaches and the players around her notice those things. So that's all that matters. And of course, us commentators. Was that a different <laughs> selectors just then? Or? Not at all, not at all. <laughs> This game is definitely heating up, though. There's a lot more body on body happening all the way down the court. Well, we pre Sorry, Kath, we predicted this, didn't we? We knew that both teams are going to have to step up. Absolutely. And it was the Swifts that really needed to step up after their loss to the West Coast Fever last week. At the moment, there's your Sunshine Coast Lightning 7 on the court. And Annie Miller has snuck into wing attack as well. So Kylie Byrne didn't make a change last week, as we mentioned. She's rung in the changes in this game. All but that defensive end down there. The miss from Housby. Can't pull it in. The power five siren. And Sophie Fawns. Continuing to impress, 15 from 17, 88% shooting. Miller, Sherian, Batchel Door, very similar to the play that Conan was winning out on as well. The little few steps forward and drop back. Proud, long to Fawns. Oh, Henschliff, Henschliff. The contact just inside the circle. What is she going to do with it? No need to force the long ones. But Fawns misses a sit-up. Miller. Cassidy. Conan. Wants more from Batchelor. Didn't like what she was offering. Now ball in hand. Conan. The swing to Sherian. Swing again. Miller being very patient here. Waiting for something. And there it is. that backspace. They're really finding their shooters in that backspace every single time, Kat. Well, a reminder that Sam Pullman is on the sideline for us tonight. And Sam, what have you got? 
I'm sitting straight next to Steph Wood, who's bibbed up, ready to enter back the court. I think having that match on Conan and Clow was really the difference in terms of Lightning dominating. So I think Wood will come back in and we'll see Clow, um, sorry, Conan back, come back on and, and match up against Clow. Yeah, certainly haven't had the same sort of fluency they have when they have their playmaker in Steph Wood on the court. Batchel Dor hasn't missed since she's come on three from three. But you're right, there goes the change in back of play. It's Conan off for the time being. Wood to goal attack with Batchel Dor back at shooter. Fraser, Turner. Proud. Oh, Hensley had a good look at it. Housby, Suncorp super shot. Can she drop it? She can. That one never looked like missing that one. <laughs> Super shot, Helen Housby, that's her third. And not forgetting that Suncorp donating $100 per Suncorp super shot sunk to the Confident Girls Foundation. Can Batchel Dorr make it another $100? She can. Another young player that just has so much confidence when she steps out on court. I really enjoyed watching her um, at the Team Girls Cup is where we all kind of get to, got to know who she was. So, yeah, lovely to see that confidence to just turn and shoot. Well, that is the beauty of the Team Girls Cup, isn't it? Because we haven't had it the last couple of seasons due to the pandemic. And you're so right. It's a, a lot of the youngsters we finally get to see all across the positions. Miller. Wood. Looks for the connection. It's not there. Wood again. Doesn't want to shoot it long. Well, they're now just fighting for the territory. Batchel Dorr's got the hot hand. That's her first. No, a second, apologies. Fawns. There's your, your quarter breakdown. Up and down in the first two. Can't be separated in the third. Makes for an exciting final quarter of play. Proud. Fawns. Proud again, a long way back, trying to find some sort of space. You could just see the Lightning setting up a tiny little box defence there, just down in that corner pocket. And it was making it really hard for the Swiss to find space. Contact, contact the ball. Contact. Hadley, the contact penalty. Sherian, Miller. Direct into Batchel door in the same spot she nailed one moments ago. Well, she can't miss from there. Three from three, Suncorp super netball shots. Fawns, can she do similar? No, but the rebound from Housby. 30 seconds to go in this third term. Still can't be separated, 17 apiece in this third quarter. Miller, Batchel Door. Well, when you're feeling it, you're feeling it. And isn't she what? Takes the Sunshine Coast Lightning out by three. Can the Swiss respond in time? It's got to fall. Well, it's been a stranglehold of the third quarter. The Sunshine Coast Lightning, though, get up and find themselves with a three buffer again as we head into the final quarter. Strap yourselves in, everybody. It's going to be an interesting one. Don't go anywhere. They've had some patches of brilliance, particularly from that lady at the back there, Sophie Fawns, though. The job at hand is now to Katie Ann Dehaney. Yeah, and gave Katie Ann Dehaney, we know how dynamic she can be, especially in the air, Kath, so this will be something different for Sophie Fawns to think about with her game. Let's go down to Sam Pullman. Knows defence better than anyone. What do you make of this late change for the Sunshine Coast Lightning? I think it's needed. Uh, Kylie Byrne was really positive to her defenders, but really making sure that they don't chase that really moving attack line for the Swift. So working together and making sure that somebody drops on that high ball that they can exploit them on. So Dehaney comes on the court and brings lots of height and long arms. So they can't get away with the pass they have been so far. So watch this matchup. Interesting to hear you say that because we have heard that a lot in opposing huddles about the Swift's attack. 
back line, telling their defenders not to chase them because they are so mobile. So it's not the first time that's been the instruction. There she is, Katie Ann Dehaney, the ultimate impact player. We saw her do that time and time again for the Vixens the last couple of seasons. Made the move in the off-season for more court time. Fawns to Proud, Housby. Strong take and the big split. Gets them back to three. Wood. Miller. Conan, Wood. Oh, you can see straight away she wanted to go back, didn't she? She had to be patient and wait for it. Anyone you feel like needs to stand up out of these two sides in this final quarter, Sharon? Well, Kath, it's kind of, it's, a, it's really hard because it's kind of um, very, they're playing very similar style of netball here. And, you know, it's goal for goal. I know there's only three or four in it at the moment. But look, I think they're just going to have to turn more ball over down this end in the Lightning defence end. You know, they're obviously looking for something different, um, some way to get that edge. And maybe Dehaney could be the answer. Well, this certainly is the preferred shooting line for the Sunshine Coast Lightning, so they want to finish this quarter strongly. Wood and Conan back on. There's Kylie Byrne, Vicky Wilson. Talk about some experience to have in your ear. Former Aussie Diamonds captain. Over 100 tests for Australia as well. Hadley back to Turner. Hadley again cannot penetrate here at the moment. The New South Wales Swifts, both defenders forcing shooters high. And that's the end result, the pressure. Annie Miller, what? She just got herself into position to get that ball because she knew she had to. Well, probably one too many flashy passes coming out of the defence end. And Intercepts close, you know, five if, to four. Sorry, Kath, I was just going to say, if your defenders are working overtime, you've really got and to get, it, you know, get those intercepts, okay. you've really got to treasure the ball and get it down there safely. Well, I can only imagine how frustrating that is for the defenders doing all the work just to have it thrown away. Sunshine Coast Lightning now out by five. So the ball has to be turned over here from the New South Wales Swifts. Which players are going to stand tall and deliver oh, that give and ball? Go. Well, when they land right there on the circle edge, it's hard to stop them at that point, isn't it? That feed over one-on-one. -on -one. It sure is. And that give and go is just that speedy movement, drive onto the circle that's very hard for the uh, defenders uh, to stop. It's <laughs> tough work coaching, isn't it? Uh, Both of them having a sip of water at the yeah. same time. You wonder what's in that bottle, though, Kath, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Probably not what they want at this point <laughs> of this game. Dehaney times it well, but Housby finishes off. Still five the difference, 11 minutes to go, so plenty of time for the New South Wales Swifts. Conan out, long way out. Hinchley. Wood. Miller. Well, Miller's done a brilliant job of just getting herself right at the top of the circle on the edge since she's every entered the single, game. Yeah, every single time, Kat, she's just getting down there, isn't she? So um, she's, they're going to have to start holding her up because that's just too dangerous to have an attacker right on that circle feeding the ball. Proud. Contact penalty against Henschlip. So Housby, will she shoot it from here or pass it off? Finds Fawns. Well, rims out, and Dehaney, that's what she does so well. The strong rebound, well, Miller. She's, she's actually made Fawns change her style of shooting, too, on the, with the balk, so... Spooked her, hasn't she? Absolutely. That's a win. That is a win. Oh, look at that. There's your difference. Eight rebounds to one. So the Sunshine Coast Lightning absolutely dominating that stat. And Dehaney's going to make it so much harder for them to get one. There it is one more time. Conan, the little forward and pop back. And that's that move that Bryony was talking to her defenders in the break. She talked about Conan will suck you out and she will drop back every time. So you need to be aware of that. Um, and look, it's been happening all game, hasn't it?
It has. It's one thing to recognise it, but picking when it's going to happen and trying to stop it a different thing altogether, isn't it? Exactly. Quick movement here from the New South Wales Swifts. Forts. Housby. Well, you wouldn't be at all concerned about this being a nail-biting game with a Helen Housby in your team. She loves these big moments. Always wants the ball in her hands. Miller. Long to Wood. Fumbles it. Out of court. Well, here's the first of the opportunities for the New South Wales Swifts to try and get this gap back. It's now out to seven, so they need to score off this. And then really, if it doesn't get any smaller, this gap, they're going to be forced into some super shots in three minutes' time. Adley. Proud. Fawns. Back to Proud, the quick double play. Doesn't want to shoot it. Well, smart work though, she milked the penalty. Oh, overcooked that one just a little bit. Just a little bit, that was an air ball. <laughs> Or a lot. That was very <laughs> diplomatic of you. Oh, was it? Yeah, well, just trying to be nice, Kath, but yeah, pretty obvious, wasn't it? <laughs> Housby, Hadley. What a great shot. New aerial shot for Fox Netball. You can see the width of the court there and what the players are up to. The high five from Sophie Fawns to Helen Housby. They know how important that one was. Here come the Swifts. The crowd know it too. They're getting right behind them. The decibels have just gone up a little notch. Well, Klaus, so close. Got to start getting a few tips on those and turning them over. Seven and a half minutes of play left in this game. What can the Swifts do? Well, that is not what they want to do. The offensive contact against the co-captain, Maddie Proud. And she'll be working overtime to get that back, Kath. That's she she absolutely <laughs> will be. And that is the sign of a good player, isn't it? Miller, Wood. Forces it through to Conan in the smallest of gaps. Sherry it. Again, the one-on-one -on -one exploited. Conan makes it seven, the difference again. And there it is, the tactical timeout. The HCF timeout goes the way of the New South Wales Swifts. What magic can head coach Bryony Akel come up with here to get this New South Wales Swifts side back in this contest? They need ball back and they need it back now, which is why she's standing directly with her defence end. Let's have a listen. They are, but I think we're trying to keep her up, right? Because I think we should drop back and do a split circle and keep the movement happening. Does that make sense? I think we're worrying about that ball. It is always going to car on the baseline. We must protect that baseline. They want you on the baseline on her. Make sense? Yeah? Um, let's angle up and force her back over this way. Let's walk them over to the side again. Give ourselves a chance. transition speed from the Sunshine Coast Lightning way too fast down court. Wants the Swifts to do what? Yeah, so she wants the goal defence and the wing defence to sit up a bit higher in that mid-court and just set up a bit of a box defence. And look, I agree with her because the Lightning's transition is just too quick and they need to slow that ball down because that's why it's getting in so easily to Cara Conan on that baseline. She also talked, Kath, about the two defenders doing a split circle to protect the baseline uh, because that's exactly where Cara's getting it every single time. So not worry so much about what uh, Steph Wood's doing outside, but Conan's the one that's doing all the damage at the moment. Well, she certainly is. 46 from 47. Sam Pullman had an ear in the Sunshine Coast Lightning huddle. Sam? 
I listened in to Kylie speaking to Lightning goalkeeper Dehaney. She spent all the time talking to her, saying you need to see the ball and continue to adjust your positioning so you can always see the player and the ball. So keep an eye out. They've pinpointed Dehaney to get some hand on ball in this last few minutes. Well, if anyone can do it, Katie Ann Dehaney can. Well, Maddie Proud still having a brilliant game in terms of the Nissan net points. She's sitting on 92, having an absolute cracker for the New South Wales Swifts, leading by example. As you can see, your score breakdown there, the Lightning taking control of this fourth, and still plenty of feeling in this contest. The crowd not happy with that call, Kath. No, there's the match leaders for the Nissan net points, though. As we mentioned, Maddie Proud. Turner and Clow. So whilst we thought it was getting easily into the lightning shooting circle, they're obviously doing something right to be sitting at the top of that stat. That's a good little connection into Housby. Maddie Proud very slow to get up. And she'll be thankful for this timeout called by the umpire just to wipe the floor. Normally pops straight back up. What a cracking game she's had. The Telstra player to watch, been outstanding. She's on 52 feeds, Sharon. That's that is huge. huge. That is huge. Absolutely huge. And we keep saying she's got a, a point to prove in this match, hasn't she? You know, she, that's missing out on, on such an important selection. You can do that for a player. So there's still room for her. There's still spots for, you know, to be taken. You are spot on there because there is. They've taken 18. They can take up to 22. And... Stacey Marinkovic on centre circle the other night said that they will be looking the entire time and will put more people in that squad if they need to. Fawns, Suncorp super shot. It is the power five. She sinks it. That helps the cause here for the New South Wales Swifts. Got them back to six, but they need some more ball back here. And the crowd have well and truly come alive. Cheering their side home. Sherry. Well, an easy feed straight to Hadley. An opportunity here for the New South Wales Swiss. Fawns wants it back, taking control of this game all by herself. Well, there's the difference between the two coaches. One starting to look a little stressed. One happy with what she just saw from her team. Helen Housby knows they need the twos. She's put herself in the territory, but they can't make it fall. What an impact Dehaney's having on the shot, over the shot, isn't she? She's, she's spooked them both, hasn't yep, she? Yep. And that's so important for defenders to mix up the way they, they actually defend the shot. You can't just do the same thing over and over again. So Dehaney's doing an excellent job. Down the other end, the Sunshine Coast Lightning just keep going. Kara Conan gone to the bench. Batchel door back on a goal shooter. Henschliff. Well, they're making a point of it now. The Sunshine Coast Lightning. Kylie Byrne is up out of her seat. Batchel door, Miller. Batchel door. She was hot handed from here moments ago. Can't make that one fall. Swifts really need to protect this ball and get it up there and score if they've got any chance of winning this match, Kath. Yeah, well, it's just under three minutes to go, so it's not a whole heap of time to try and turn this around. They're down by seven. If this sinks, it will certainly help. Oh, was the hero with the Suncorp super shots. Well, does coach Brony Akel know that may be the fate of the Swifts for tonight? A little shake of the head. Wood. Sherian, Miller, Batchelor, back to Hinchliff. Well, seven the difference, just over two minutes. Not out of the question for the New South Wales Swifts. There is a power five in play. <laughs> Steph Wood though, making it harder. Now eight the difference, and the Sunshine Coast Lightning centre pass, Sherian. 
Hinchley. Cassidy. Sherian. Well, Maddie Brown. <laughs> Waiting for something to open up. That's not where they want their shots from. Helen Housby yelling out, get it back. Well, now the pressure really mounting on sinking these shots and they're just not dropping. Helen Housby now three from eight. Suncorp super shots. some real urgency to get this ball back to the centre pass. Running out of time here. Down by six. Oh, I could see that coming a mile away, that cross-court delivery. She was ready for that one. Oh, smart work, though, between Annie Miller and Cassidy. Well, the crowd don't like it, but it was just exceptional play. Very smart from the two youngsters in the side. And Steph Wood. Well, that's the nail in the coffin, isn't it? And the centre pass to follow. Here's the Harvey Norman replay. Miller knew she couldn't pick it up again because it would have been a replay. So she did somewhat of a fend, just trying to protect the ball until a teammate got there. Very clever. Well, that's another one for the Lightning. Now out by nine. 20 seconds. That there will be the ball game. What a finish from the Sunshine Coast Lightning. Well, not the way the Swifts would have liked to end this game. This is, though, if they can do something here. No, oh, Bryony Akel, there's the face of a coach that knows it's a little too late. Alan Housby drains a Suncorp super shot. It won't get them across the line, but it gets them back to seven. So the Sunshine Coast Lightning continue their form from last week after starting the season with some massive losses. They will love that they feel a little back on track now in season 2022.